Hey there my gorgeous friends on the internet, in today's episode we're gonna take a look at TypeScript. I know loads of you requested it, so I'm, I was surprised actually I didn't have a video on my channel yet. And I also want to show people that have never touched TypeScript before, just how easy it is to learn. By the end of this video, you're gonna be up and going with TypeScript. You're not gonna be an expert. Let's, let's lower our expectations here. I'm joking. But uh, you'll be good to go. You can go into your next React project and just start using TypeScript and you'll be good to go. So, hope you're excited and also check out the courses down below. I am full on working on remaking the full stack React course with TypeScript and Prisma and all the good stuff. So that's going to be exciting. And of course, if you even get it now, if you get the full, full stack course, the update's going to be free. So you don't need to worry. Let's go. So tip number one to get started with TypeScript and React is choose one, whether you go next or Vite. So let's try it with Vite first. All you have to do is head over to vite.js.dev and run the command npm create Vite at latest. And that's gonna automatically give you an option to do, uh, let's, let's give it a name, TypeScript React. And it's gonna automatically give you an option to pick a framework. So let's say React. And here we get to choose if we want to have TypeScript included, which we'll add. And that's pretty much it. That's how you get started. And then you can CD into that project, run npm install, and then open up the dev server and you are good to go. Same goes with Next.js as well. When you run npm create next app or whatever the command's name is, I always forget, you'll be able to add TypeScript into that project. And once you add, let me just quickly show you the Next.js project I have going on here. So if we head over here to learning and go over to TypeScript next, I highly recommend, uh, it's probably gonna default you with the TypeScript files here. Um, but if you even have JavaScript files, I just recommend literally renaming them to TSX and having the uh, strict mode turned on here in the tsconfig file. And then just head and see which errors you're gonna get and try to correct them on their own. Okay, let's start off this list off with a super simple example. Uh, all you need to do in this case is we're just running Next.js and all you need to do is rename your file to TSX and that's it. And we have just a simple component here where we use client and we import use state, right? Um, we cannot use state if we don't have use client here at the top, but that's it. Um, so what we're doing is we are creating a state where we hold a post title, all right? And by default, as you can see, if I try to change that post title, it's gonna say, no, you fucking can't because that's a number. So that's the nice thing about TypeScript. You don't even actually need to do too much because these hooks like use state and use effect are automatically inferred. What the hell does that mean, God damn it. it means that we don't need to specify a type. It just automatically recognizes it since we added the default value here as empty string, it's not gonna let me add a number now. So it's gonna say, hey, number, not good, we want a string. So that's cool. So if I try to do even like a Boolean or something false, it's gonna error out as you can see, just like that. So that's it. However, you might have a specific case where you have a string, which is fine, but let's say for a split second, it's gonna return a null value. You don't have that data yet, so it's gonna be null. And then it's gonna complain to you because it's gonna say, well, it's null, so I mean, I don't know what to do with that. So what you can do is specify here using the arrow keys like that, and you can say it's gonna be a string, but I can add an or sign here like that. It might be null for like a split second. So then it's fine. As you can see, it's not complaining anymore. So you can add another parameter here to specify that. Let's look at types really quick. So what I have here is essentially just a function in this page.tsx. All right, this is in next. Uh, and I have a server component here. So we're just fetching some data from an API and I'm getting back the result, which is just like a title and an ID. All right, so by default here, I'm getting the post back. But if I hover over data here, it's just, it's type any. Um, if I do a console log get posts, sorry, data, and we do an npm run dev, as you can see here, we have an array of objects. All right, and that's all the data I have. Cool, but I mean, it's still not, it can be any type. 
And that's usually what you want to avoid. You want to specify the data that you want to get back. And then you also have the auto completion and you are safe from doing something silly. So what we can do, first of all, is just define a single type if we want. We can just add a colon here and I can say, well, this is a type string, right? I know I'm getting back type string from this. As you can see now, data is type string. But now, as you can see, I have loads of errors saying, well, you cannot map over a string, so that's not good, okay? But we know what the data type is. So what we can do is just go here to the top and specify a type on its own. So I can say type uh, post props, right? I'm gonna set that equal to an object here, like that. So I know I'm gonna have an ID here. So I, uh, this is gonna be a number, basically. So I can just say number. And we also have a title that's gonna be a type string. So that's cool. Now you can also have like a toggle or whatever that can be true or false. So that can be a Boolean here, if that's what you want. Um, if you want an array of objects, which is what we have in this case, I can just add an empty pair of an array. Now you might also have data that you're not sure if you have or not. So I can say message and add a question mark like that and say string. All right, now this might exist, this might not exist. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so now we can go here to the actual function right here and I can specify with a colon that this is going to be a promise like that interface promise and I can specify that the type here is going to be post props by adding it like that and that's it that's essentially it so now if we take a look here on data it's going to say it's type post props and now if we go down here and let's say I want to render something else out I can say post dot and look at that, all the properties show up and I can just click it and I know that's gonna be perfectly fine. Okay, let's look at props. So even though I defined a post props here, which is gonna define what we have access to in the data, which is perfectly fine. So I can do it down here, right? If I do post, again, I have access to uh, whatever I defined in my post data, like that, cool. Uh, but what if I want to pass down props? So let's say I have a function here that says function posts, and I, I'm just rendering out a hello here. All right, simple as that. Well, if I go here and replace this H2 here, right, we have it, and I just want to replace it with a post and render out this rather than just a H2 down here. So let's replace it with post. Okay, so by default, I don't know what value I can pass in here. What does this post need? I'm not sure. So we can actually define that here in post. So again, all you need to do is do a type and give it any name you want. I can just say post type or post props. I think I did the same name here, but it's, it's fine. It's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna set this equal to a curly bracket object here. And here I know I'm gonna have an ID that's gonna be a number. I can have a title that's gonna be a string. And I'm also, let's say we have a toggle here that we can set to false by default. All right, cool. And let's say here we have like a button that does some sort of weird on click on all of these and it just runs a function. And let's say we have a toggle here that does whatever, right, from use effect. So let's say import use, sorry, use state I meant from react. And then down here I can say const toggle and set toggle or whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna keep it simple. Let's just keep it like that. Because all I wanna show you is once you define it here, your type, and then we go here, um, we can extract them ID title and let's say toggle from the post props. Cool. And that's it. That's all the setup we need. So now when we're back here in our post props, if I just add a make, make a new post like that, see, I know exactly what data this post needs for it to work. So I can do an ID if I want to, and I can pass down post ID and I can pass down title set that equal to post dot title. And I also have a toggle. So let's pass down that as 
false. Cool, and hit save, and that works perfectly fine. Now, what if I don't have a toggle? So look at that. I say toggle false, but I'm not passing down a toggle. Then it's gonna say, well, hey, you need the toggle, so make sure you pass that down. Otherwise, this component's not gonna work for you. You're gonna have tons of errors. But let's say it's not necessary to pass down the toggle. That's like an extra feature. So I can just add a question mark here. And then as you can see, that's an optional property now. We don't actually need to use it. What we can also do is, let's say we make a library or something, and we specify that we have a component that has three different values that you can use. So let's say I have toggle here and I can specify something like this, uh, closed and or open, right? So I can do closed or open. There we go. So now when we hit save, I can come here and I can define a toggle and set that equal to. And as you can see, if I take a look, hit control space, it gives me two options, which is closed and open. And that's going to be perfectly fine. No errors whatsoever. Uh, if I try to define something else, uh, shut, it's going to error out and say shut is not assignable. Uh, so either choose closed or open. But what about the children, man? Um, yeah, let's see children and how that works. And after this, I also want to take a look at onclick and on change and event listeners and stuff like that, because they have their own specific types. Now, honestly, you just need to look up and see uh, what they're called, uh, because you wouldn't wouldn't guess it. So with children here, it's going to say, hey, children cannot be a type of any, right? Uh, and all we're doing here is essentially getting the prop here of children and just rendering out each different page down here. So, but we need to specify that, hey, these are the children and they're gonna be the pages and we cannot pass down anything else. So uh, for, for children, what you can do is do a type of, uh, let's, let's just call it props, okay? or children props would be probably better. Children props. And this is gonna be, this is gonna have a children on here and it's a type of react dot react node like that. Cool. So now we can just go here and add a children prop. And as you can see, that's not going to complain anymore and everything is perfectly fine. And we can see that this is a parameter child of children. That's a react node. Now you don't need to necessarily specify a type up here if you don't want to, because essentially it's an object like that, right? So if you want to, you could not do this and just get rid of the children props here and define it here like this children react dot react node like that and hit save and as you can see that works perfectly fine and then we don't need to define the type i like to define the type i feel like it keeps it much simpler and it just doesn't look that weird to me okay let's see how we handle on clicks and on changes and stuff like that so for now just look at this for a second here uh just ignore Ignore this, ignore everything. Just look at the button here and this change title, okay? So what we wanna do is I'm just gonna add an on click on this change title, right? So let's say when we click the button, this title is gonna update to something random. So I can say, um, set new title to, woo, cool. But let's say I also want to do something with the event here. So maybe uh, I have an input here or something, right? This E says that it's type any, it's values never read. And if I try to type E dot whatever, see nothing really shows up for me. So by default, if you separate a function like here, you need to specify the event uh, and what ty type it is. But the problem is if we type e dot something, see, we don't get the actual event. So we have no idea what we can use. So for that, again, you pretty much have to look it up on the internet and search, hey, um, 
react uh, on click TypeScript, right? And see what type it is. So in this case, if you look it up on the internet, you need to do react dot uh, mouse events. And that's it, cool. So now that we added the type, now it says E is type of mouse event. And when we type E dot look, we have client text, client Y, movement X, everything that you need, target, screen, and then you have your autocomplete nice and clean. So that's really good. Now that's one way of doing it. Now, if you don't mind, you don't even actually need to do any of this here. What you could do is not make a separate function as long as you're happy writing it in line like this. So button on click, I'm just gonna add an arrow function here. Again, it's gonna automatically do it for you and it's gonna say it's a mouse event with a HTML button. Cool, so now if I type E dot ba ba ba, as you can see, it automatically completes for me. So if you don't mind to do it in line rather than making it a new function, go ahead and do that. Or if you wanna do it separately, just write it out in line and just find out what type it is right here because you essentially can just see it and copy it over. All right, so that's gonna be it. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, I recommend just literally taking a file and renaming them to TSX and see what kind of errors you're getting here and try to fix them one by one. And that's gonna teach you loads about TypeScript. And sometimes it's better to not overcomplicate it and do loads of types. Uh, sometimes it's better to just maybe start simple and, you know, whenever you define a parameter, add a type to it whenever you're making a, a component and you're passing down some props. Go ahead and do that and see how much it can help you out. All right, that's going to be it for me today. If this video was helpful, please drop a subscribe and a like and let me know what you thought of it. Thank you so much again for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.